Hello folks, my name is Tab Morey. Um, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that uh, somebody gets something from it. Um, these are techniques and tips that over my years of uh, piddling with leather uh, for a profession for a short while and then the rest of the time as a hobby. I uh, picked up a few things that have been helpful to me and I'm wanting to share just in case uh, you don't know or maybe you're looking for a different way that maybe this will help you out in some way. In other words, I cut this pattern out, all right? When I get finished tooling it and the finished product, this is what I want, okay? I want it to look like this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that with a packing tape, all right? What we're gonna do is we're gonna put this down. And there's there's other alternatives. Um, I have seen people, uh, a people use a, um, uh, a rubber cement and um, put it to a cardboard or something like that. I've seen that done as instruction. Uh, if that works for you, then uh, go ahead. The reason why I don't do that is because the um, item is not going to get a backing. I'm going to take and slick the edges and it's going out just like this. So if I put that rubber cement, then I have an issue. I'm obligated to put some kind of backing on there. So this is an alternative. If what you got works for you, man, then uh, stay with it. If you're looking for something new, give this a try. So we're just going to put it down. It doesn't matter if it overlaps. It doesn't matter. It hasn't got to be perfect. We do want it to stick. You know? um, this, I suggest putting this down on before you put any oils, water, or anything. We want to get as many of those fibers stuck to this tape as possible. Now the good thing is, is as you're tooling this, uh, even as you uh, slick it, you are driving those fibers down onto that tape, so that will help. So we're just going to throw this in here. Let me get it covered. Alright, so there we go. Now we'll just take a quick light. Just so these don't stick to your hand and drag your workpiece all over the place. That's really aggravating. You just kind of stick them back on themselves. You're going to peel this off. Let's try to keep keep it off our work surface. Um, if you're tooling rough out, this is going to work. Just put it on the other side. The, put it on your uh, um, hair side. Or top grain, I'm sorry. Alright. So now, here we go. It's taped. Alright. Step one. Step two. <clears throat> I've had uh, several people on Facebook and throughout the years asked me, uh, you know, what's the secrets? Well, that was the same question that I asked. And a friend of mine, Jim Linnell, uh, awesome guy, man. This guy is, is uh, as good as they come in, in leather work. Um, he's an Al Stolman recipient, an Al Stolman Award recipient. He showed me this t technique, and I'm sure that what I'm going to show you today is not, not exactly how Jim showed this to me because it was over 15 years ago. So I'm pretty confident that I've subconsciously, for whatever reason, modified his, his way of doing things. So Jim, if you see this, um, I'm not claiming this to be what you taught me. This is what I've made of what you taught me. And also a, uh, a man by the name of Kerry Blanchard, uh, he showed me a close, uh, something real close to this as well. So here's what we got. Just plain old water, okay? Nothing fancy. Actually, I'll bring it, zoom in, and I'll try not to. I'll try to leave everything. Plain old water. This is a woolly, or a piece of wool. It's what's left over from a saddle shearling. All I did is took my shears, uh, cut a corner off, and then trimmed it up really short. It doesn't have to be very long. You don't need that wool hanging out two inches. Okay. So um, trim it up, uh, just to know, let you know how good this stuff is. I actually antiqued with this piece of leather uh, yesterday. As soon as I got finished with it, I dropped it in a cup of water, um, let it set this morning, went in there over the faucet, rinsed it out, used a little bit of uh, some kind of cleaning agent, it doesn't matter. Uh, cleaned it up real good, and here it is, I'm using it again. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to first get some water on this. And when we're soaking this, or anytime we apply water, Okay, to a, a project, 
highly recommend, even if it's just a light coat, to cover that entire portion of that project. In other words, don't just do that if that's the only place you're going to tool. So what's going to happen is you're going to have water marks. Okay? So go ahead, even if it's real light, you just want to even it out so that when that water dries, if there's any minerals or, or any contaminants that's going to discolor this leather, you'll do it evenly so it's, it's not an, an issue. So we've taken and put a little bit of moisture in here. And uh, don't soak it all the way through, but you know, get you get it started, get it ready to start casing. Let that soak up. Now, for this demonstration today, and what I recommend is ivory soap. Um, Man, I tried a, a ton of different soaps. This you can buy just about anywhere, and it seems to work best for me. Um, it's a really, I don't know, whatever's in it. Uh, is it's not only compatible to your skin, but it's compatible to this uh, cowhide as well. So we're just going to take take right here. I'm going to lather this up, okay? And if you look, I'm going to get me a lather right there. All right. It doesn't matter that it is drying out right now, okay? We'll go through this two or three times. If you get a phone call and and this dries out, well don't worry about it. You'll just lather it up again. All right, so we've done that. Now we're gonna add a, a, a new element here, and this is gonna be a slicking block. Um, Brian, that has um, Masters of Leather, he has a really neat, uh, he has a video on slicking leather, and he took a piece of uh, wood, rounded it off, and man, this guy can he can slick like whole fenders in one pass. Uh, really good video. It's on YouTube. If you get a chance, watch that. Brian Harms, I believe is his last name. Brian Harms. Uh, really good video. What this is, is a piece of uh, maple. It was a piece I had. I just cut the block off and I've, I've ground on it, try to make it custom fit, you know, and make it look fancy. But the main objective is this. Whatever piece you use, whether it's a glass bottle, um, uh, a candle holder, a lady told me she used a candle holder, uh, just whatever. You want a rounded, hard edge, okay? As long as that edge is rounded, you're in good shape. There was a hand lotion. Uh, I can't remember it had a yellow lid, but that hand lotion, uh, Corn Huskers hand lotion, it comes in a plastic bottle now, but it used to come in a glass bottle, very heavy-duty glass bottle. If you can find one of those, that is the perfect slicker. It's got a rounded edge, it's heavy, you can throw it against the wall. Of course, that's an exaggeration, but it's an extremely tough um, bottle. Makes an excellent slicker. It's just right, fits your hand. So if you find a corn huskers bottle made of glass, there's your perfect slicker. Take you some maple, uh, any kind of hardwood, oak, whatever. Uh, slick you an edge and you've got it. So that's our slicker. I'm going to come back. Go back to our soap because you can see our suds have uh, went away. So I'm going to take and I'm going to lather this up. Oh, I got a good lather now. All right. Once I do that, I'm going to take right here and I'm going to slick this leather off. I'm just applying pressure. I'm going to go one direction. Okay. Now, you may say, Tab, why are you going through all of these pains? Well, here's what's happening. I'm taking a piece of leather that used to be covered in hair. So it has all these hair follicles. So if you went under a microscope, you got all these hips in these valleys, okay? And you're gonna drag a swivel knife through this. Well, your best swivel knife cut is smooth and flowing, okay? And that, that's your objective, or, or most cases that's the objective. What I've done by slicking this leather is I've leveled the playing field. So now instead of drawing my knife through these little hips and valleys and ditches and ruts in the road, I've just paved that road down. I made it slick by putting the soap on this. What I'm doing is I'm driving this soap down into this leather and that's going to, uh, excuse me, it's going to help that knife blade flow through the leather, it's going to give it a lubricant, okay? 
This is also a product that's not going to affect your finishes, okay? You're not going to have a, a bad outcome from this. Now you'll see right here, I'm not quite getting all the stretch marks or the wrinkles, I guess, in the height. I'm not getting all of those out. What I am doing is I'm making this leather where that knife is going to slide the very best that it can possibly slide. Okay. Now, there's also another element here. I've slicked it, so I've gave myself the best possibility to make the best cut possible. Okay. I have, uh, I've smoothed it out. This is going to fix any imperfections a lot of times. Uh, once you go to lay, doing your layout and stuff like that, if you slick this down, if you've got a scratch or, or a dimple or whatever, you can go ahead and get that out. Get it out now so that you don't have to deal with it later on after you've got the tooling in place or, or whatever and you've got obstacles you have to work around. Go ahead and get all of that out right now. Good level playing field. I put a lubricant down into the leather, okay? It's going to allow my knife blade to slide and one small thing that, that I uh, found out over the years is once I put this soap and I slick this leather, the casing, it's going to hold its moisture a lot better, okay? I don't know, I guess we're just kind of putting a cap over it or whatever, but it, the leather doesn't appear to dry out near as bad, um, and it just it's just a lot of plus to it. As you can see, had I not been running my chops, this is about a 30 second deal. Okay, um, very simple products. What buck, buck fifty for a little bar of soap? Uh, either that or go to a motel. I think they have this stuff for free. Nothing but a glass of water. The woolly you don't have to use. I mean, it could be a, a rag, paper towel, whatever. Okay, uh, slickers, whatever you can find. Probably dig around in your garbage, or maybe up in Mama's attic and find you an old piece of glass or a piece of wood that you can slick off. If you can't find one, call me. I'll make you one and sell it to you cheap. It, it's, it's no big deal. Uh, go to uh, a, a cabinet shop. Ask them if they'll just cut it to size. Go buy you some sandpaper. Uh, once you get it sanded down to a 220, 300 grit, something like that, take and uh, buff it off. Just put it on your buffer that you're sharpening your knife with. Slick it off, and here you go. Okay? So we went from this, starting out, to this. Now the, the leather looks darker, that's because it's holding this moisture in here. Once I get through, there is a plus. I just keep coming up with stuff to add here. Another thing that's going to help, or this helps, is once you put your your resistor, or, or what did they call it, uh, resistant, your sealer, once you put that over, okay, by this being slick, once you start antiquing your antique edges right here, by slicking it off, you've closed those pores. So you're not going to have to deal with as many streaks uh, and you're not going to have as much antiquing left behind on your top grain that uh, you want to pop. I mean, you want, your, you want this to be lighter, different color than your antique. So by slicking this off, there's not as much antiquing left behind. It'll be a lot easier to clean up. So we're going to take a break. I'm gonna... Thanks for watching.